Hello friends, welcome to Easy Embryology to Gross Anatomy channel. Today we are going to see about Gross Anatomy of Pituitary Gland. Pituitary Gland, it is also called Hypofacial Gland. So it is a very small gland that is a very small endocrine gland means that is Pituitary Gland. So this Pituitary Gland, it looks like a peanut shape only. So this gland is suspended from the floor of the third ventricle. So it is a very small gland but it controls many other endocrine glands also. And this gland and its secretion is controlled by the hypothalamus. So when we see the length and transverse diameter is, that is the anteroposterior diameter is about 8 mm. And the transverse diameter is more when compared to anteroposterior. The transverse diameter is about 12 mm in diameter. And then the weight of the gland is 500 to 600 mg only. So this gland, it is also called a hypophysial gland. These are the main uh, gross features we can see. The pituitary gland is located in the pituitary fossa. So this is the pituitary fossa. So this pituitary fossa is located in a bone called a cella tersica. So this bone is called a spinoid bone. This green color marked area is the cella tersica of spinoid bone. So the pituitary gland is located in this fossa that is called a pituitary fossa. Or we can see it as a hypophysial fossa. So when we see the pituitary gland, it has majorly two lobes. One is the largest anterior lobe and the small lobe is the posterior lobe. The anterior lobe, it is also called adenohypophysis and posterior lobe, it is also called a neurohypophysis. The anterior lobe which is developed from the upward growth from the ectoderm of stomadium which is called a Rathke's pouch. And the posterior lobe which is developed from the downward growth of the diencephalon. So the posterior lobe is developed from that. So this anterior lobe again it is subdivided into three parts that is Pars distalis, which is the largest part, and pars tuberalis, and then pars intermedia. So this one is the pars intermedia. So this is nothing but the remnant of the Rathke's pouch. So in future, this pars intermedia becomes the intermediate lobe. So totally three lobes is present anterior intermediate lobe and posterior lobe. So and then posterior lobe and its subdivisions are that is it contains the infundibular part and then the median eminence this part is called the median eminence and then the pars nervosa this one is called the pars nervosa which is the largest part of the posterior lobe. So these are the subdivisions we can see it in the features of the pituitary gland. So once after seeing these features, what are the relations we should know? So this pituitary gland, so here it is the pituitary. Superiorly, it is related to the optic chiasma and the floor of the third ventricle and then superiorly the diaphragm cellae. Inferiorly, it is related to the spinoid air sinus and on either side, we can see this is related to the oculomotor now, that is third cranial now and then fourth one is trochlear, then abducens and the ophthalmic and maxillary division of trigeminal nerve and internal carotid artery. So, this is the structure related on either side of the pituitary gland and the vascular relations around the pituitary gland are first this is the circle of willis so this 
three cerebral artery forms uh, connecting each other and forms the circle of the list. That is one of the relation. And another one is surrounding this pituitary gland, it is surrounded by the cavernous sinus. So this pituitary gland is supplied by superior hypophyseal and inferior hypophyseal artery. Superior hypophyseal artery is the branch of internal carotid artery. This artery majorly supplies to the infundibular part and mainly the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And this uh, superior hypophyseal artery divides into many capillaries and uh, tuft of capillaries that joins to the portal veins. This portal veins uh, is just uh, hormone releasing factors uh, which is released into the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Finally, it is uh, drains into the cavernous sinus. And when coming to the inferior hypophyseal artery, it is a branch from internal carotid artery. This mainly supplies to the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And this artery is also divided into many tufts of capillaries and it's joined with the portal vessels. Finally, it drains into the cavernous sinus. So there are two nucleus, supraoptic nucleus and paraventricular nucleus. These two are the nucleus of hypothalamus. From there, the nerve fibers uh, enters into the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland through a tract called hypothalamo-hypophyseal tract. So, through this tract, it secretes the antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and oxytocin. So, this antidiuretic hormone is essential for the water and the electrolytic balance of the body. If there is a disturbance in the hypothalamo-hypophyseal tract or if there is a disturbance in the secretion of antidiuretic hormone, the person will get a condition is called as diabetes insipidus. So, what is diabetes insipidus means? The person will excrete more amount of urine. Even the water content from the body is also excreted out. So, the person feels very thirsty, so he used to drink more amount of water. So, here, for example, the picture is given here. We can be able to compare the excretion of urine between the normal person and the diabetes insipidus person. So, this diabetes condition occurs due to the disturbance in the antidiuretic hormone that is in the hypothalamo-hypophyseal tract. So, when we see the cells of the pituitary gland, the anterior lobe has got as cells and the posterior lobe contains the nerve fibers. So, that is why the posterior lobe is named, named as a pars nervosa also. So, this anterior lobe of the pituitary gland contains a chromophyll and chromophobe cells. The chromophyll cells, again it has uh, two divisions, the one is acidophyll cell and another one is basophyll cells. The acidophyll cells, you can see it is a eosin stained which is uh, and with a large nucleus in the center. And basophyll cells which are stained with the hematoxylin with the nucleus in the center. And then chromophobe cells. So, this is the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland which contains some more amount of the nerve fibers. This nerve fibers is called pituocytes. Between the nerve fibers, we can see the capillaries also. So, the anterior lobe of pituitary gland contains basophyll and acidophyll cells. And the intermediate lobe contains basophyll and chromophobe cells. This cells essential for the secretion of the melanocyte stimulating hormone and next one is the posterior lobe of pituitary gland which is essential for the secretion of antidiuretic and oxytocin so we will see this one by one first we will see acidophil cells of anterior lobe of pituitary gland so this secretes growth hormone and prolactin so, in case of it, uh, growth hormone, it regulates the growth hormone and essential for the development of skeletal and muscles of the body. And then prolactin or lactogenic hormone, which is essential for the development of the mammary gland in case of 
female. Next one is basophil cells. Basophil cells secrete luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, interstitial cell stimulating hormone in case of male, and adenocorticotropic hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. So the basophil cells which are essential for the regulation of the luteinizing hormone, secretion of luteinizing hormone. This luteinizing hormone regulates the development of the mature ovarian follicle and formation of the corpus luteum and essential for estrogen and progesterone secretion. This occurs in case of female. In case of male, it stimulates the interstitial cells of platelet to secrete testosterone. And next one is follicle stimulating hormone which is essential to regulate the development which is essential to for the development of the mature that is graphene follicle and uh, it is essential for the secretion of estrogen. And in case of male it is induces the spermatogenesis. And then next one is it regulates the, that is adrenocorticotropic hormone. It uh, stimulates the secretion through its blood supply. And next one is the basophil cells which uh, regulates the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone to secrete thyroid hormone. Next one is posterior lobe of pituitary gland. This posterior lobe which is essential for the secretion of vasopressin and oxytocin. Vasopressin is essential for the water and electrolytic balance of the body and the oxytocin is essential for the contraction of the myoepithelial cells of the mammary gland for ejection of milk and the contraction of the uterus and during labor. The contraction of the muscles of the uterus occurs during labor. So this main function is uh, done by this oxytocin. So we can see the enlarged pituitary tumor in x-ray also. So this can be seen in this uh, x-ray that is uh, the increased space of the cella tasica we can absorb and this we can call it as uh, ballooning of cella. This is mostly due to the enlarged of pituitary tumor and the surrounding structure we should uh, remember the relations of pituitary so this superiorly related to optic chiasma so if the gland enlarge it can compress the optic chiasma and the person will get a loss of vision in the outer half of the eye field so this picture will clearly can understand this you can, you can understand this the outer of the, of the field will become dark because of the absence of uh, eye vision in this outer field the person can be able to see only this medial half of the eye field so in case of uh, basophil adenoma the person will get a Cushing syndrome some of the clinical features of the Cushing syndrome are it is the person will have a moon face and if the person will emotionally disturb they will have a buffalo hump like structure towards the back and a cardiomegaly with a high blood pressure the skins undergone easily bruising and the person will have obesity muscle weakness and osteoporosis when we see in the foot, we can see ulcer in the foot. So I think uh, you are able to understand this pituitary gland. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please share and subscribe.